If you're just using your microwave to zap some coffee or reheat your leftovers, you're missing out. Microwave ovens have a solid place in our kitchens today. Here in the test kitchen, we love to use them for all kinds of new things that we never did before, including frying shallots, removing extra moisture from wet vegetables like raw mushrooms or eggplant before cooking. We microwave to par cook foods like potatoes or squash before grilling. We even make corn on the cob. All in all, this means we're changing the way we think about microwaves, exploring their potential usefulness well beyond zapping that mug of coffee. Now, while microwave ovens can be installed, freestanding countertop microwaves are still the top sellers. Prices can go upwards of $1,000, but we focused on more affordable versions. We bought countertop models priced from about $77 to nearly $250, and we put them through a series of tests. In each model, we melted butter and watched for explosions because butter loves to blow up in the microwave. We also melted chocolate looking for smooth, creamy texture. We toasted coconut. We fried shallots and we defrosted equal sized single pound blocks of frozen hamburger. We steamed broccoli and we heated up frozen mac and cheese dinners. And we checked out any brand new features in the latest microwaves to see if they were worth buying. Now our goal was to find the best performers that would also be easy to use and maintain. First, it helps to understand a little bit about how microwaves work. These ovens are powered by a vacuum tube called a magnetron that uses electric current and magnets to generate electromagnetic waves called microwaves. They make the food's water molecules and to a lesser extent, the fat molecules vibrate and that produces heat that cooks the food. But microwaves don't penetrate food very deeply. They only reach the outer layer of whatever you're cooking. The rest of the food warms by conduction as the heat spreads inward from that hot surface. Microwave ovens cycle power on and off as they work. You're gonna hear a fan whirring continuously and then a slightly louder hum switches on and off. That's the magnetron kicking in. Now the turntable is rotating to help even out the heating by moving food around in the waves. But as anyone who's ever used a microwave knows, the food does not heat up very evenly. This is 1940s technology still being used today because it's cheap and easy to manufacture. Now recently, Companies have added newer features to help improve performance and user friendliness. Things like inverter technology, and that's where the power does not cycle on and off the way it typically does. It stays on even at lower power settings. They claim this makes for more precise cooking. Another feature is sensor mode, where the oven is measuring steam coming off the food and adjusting cooking power and time automatically. There's also voice control with Google Assistant or Alexa, and some have apps to operate the oven or even scan barcodes to send cooking instructions on frozen foods. As we tested our lineup, we learned which of these features mattered and which didn't, and how to choose the best microwave. Now here's what you wanna look for, moderate wattage. You might assume the higher the wattage, the better, this was not the case. Our lineup's power levels range from 700 to 1200 watts. Now with the high wattage ovens, you only get good results if you nearly always run them on lower power settings like 50%. Otherwise, you're gonna get overcooked, shriveled up food and that exploding butter. Now on the flip side, low wattage ovens were slower to cook, so we usually had to keep adding cooking time. The best ovens had moderate power levels of 900 to 1000 watts. Those worked efficiently with fewer adjustments and we got just right results. You want simple, intuitive controls. We asked volunteer testers to walk up and do simple tasks, and some of these models were so frustrating. Look for clearly marked, easy to decipher controls, and less is more. Who needs extra buttons labeled things like kids meals or healthy cooking or snack? What does that even mean? Look for a medium sized microwave. Unless you routinely microwave or defrost, very large amounts of food, an oven with about 0.9 to one cubic feet of interior space was perfectly adequate. Bigger models just hog up counter space and don't offer actually much more additional usable interior space. The smallest oven we tested with 0.7 cubic feet would be just fine in small households. Look for a fingerprint free finish. The worst offenders had shiny black glassy finishes and stainless steel trim, and they showed every single touch. The best ones had matte or white finishes that looked fresh even after heavy use. Next, there were a few features that were nice to have, but not essential. Sensor cooking was one of the few new features that actually paid off. Sensor modes saved us a few steps with good results. That meant cooking was a little bit more hands off with fewer steps. 
We baked potatoes in machines with and without sensor mode and tasted them blind. The sensor cooked potatoes came out consistently better and faster. Call us old fashioned, but actual door handles were so much easier and nicer to use than those typical flat panel buttons that need a hard poke to open the door and ovens that show end on the display when they're done. This saved us from icky discoveries like yesterday's reheated coffee or a dish that never made it to last night's dinner. We really liked the option to silence all that usual beeping, especially if you're someone who gets up early and doesn't want to wake up everybody else. And here's what to avoid. Forget scan to cook technology. In this GE oven, you could scan the barcode on frozen foods with an app that sends the cooking instructions right to the oven. Not only did this not save much time, but it didn't even recognize three out of the five common supermarket entrees we tried. Now skip inverter technology. This did not seem to make much difference to our cooking results. And it might've even contributed to scorching in certain tests. And we don't really love voice control because unless you need this feature to make the oven more accessible, using Alexa or Google Assistant was just kind of underwhelming. So at the end of testing, we had our favorites. The best microwave ovens were easy to use and worked reliably without overheating food. Our favorite was Breville, the compact wave soft close microwave. This thing gave us excellent cooking results, had super simple controls and nice user-friendly design details like the soft closed door and the height in front that lets you open it without knocking everything off the counter in front of it. For a model with a few extra features, we also recommend the Sharp 1000 watt microwave, which was almost as easy to use and had sensor cooking. Now for more details on all the microwaves we tested, check out the full story on americastestkitchen.com.